Welcome back to Desert Smoke Reviews. My name is Wyatt. Justin. Steve. Today we have our uh, guest reviewer, Steve, who's nice enough to bring us a few Arturo Fuente Anejos. Uh, I have never had one. My experience with Arturo Fuente is, uh, is a bit limited, so I'm really looking forward to this. Looks like a great uh, cigar. Well, thank you, Wyatt. It's good to be here. Uh, these cigars uh, come out once a year around Christmas time, and they're delivered to stores but on an allotment basis, so you can't order them as a shop owner. Uh, Fuente just sends you uh, a certain number of boxes depending on your order history. And these, uh, these cigars are a real pleasure. It's been about two years since I was able to get my hands on a box. Uh, they've changed the band a little bit. They've added a white trim to the bottom. Um, the filler in these Añejo cigars are the same as the filler in the Opus X, and they're about four different sizes. The Shark or the number 77 being the most sought after. Um, this is the number 60 that we'll be smoking today, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it'll uh, definitely be an experience. Yeah, uh, definitely be an experience. I, I totally agree. This cigar looks beautiful. It's uh, very dark, kind of a dark chocolate color. Invisible seams, no stems. Uh, smells wonderful. What are you getting on the smell, Jason? Oh, well, to me, and I, I better clarify, I'm getting a very barnyard smell to it and chocolate. And when I say barnyard, I think most of us know I don't mean cow crap. Like <laughs> some of us out there who may not uh, be, you know, into it as much. But when I say barnyard, I mean the smell of a barnyard. And yes, there's manure to that essence, but it's also the leather, the hay, the animals themselves. It's just a very earthy smell to me, very earthy. Very natural smell. Yeah. So it's not just manure. So if you guys think I'm smelling crap on this cigar, you would be <laughs> far off. It's just a deep, deep barnyard and earth for me. Maybe a bit of chocolate. The foot to me smells, it has almost a floral smell to it. Uh, something a little different from the band uh, or the wrapper. Uh, very excited. It's a nice firm pack, and what I've really noticed is it's got some tooth to the wrapper. Yeah. There's definitely some tooth to it. I might be lucky, but I'm noticing a little bit of plume on my cigar. Do you have any on that one? I don't no. see any plume, but... Uh, definitely some tooth. You can tell this yeah. is aged tobacco. Yeah. Tell it's definitely high quality. What are you getting in aroma? What? Uh, just what you said. It, it's it's interesting that you said floral on the, on the foot, because I sort of get that, too. It's a very... Uh, natural but good smell. Uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll, it'll be interesting to see if I uh, pick any of that up later in the in the stick. Steve, you got any additions? I agree, I'm getting uh, some of the leather tones and definitely that sweeter chocolate um, up towards the cap. And some of the, the floral, I'm looking forward to getting with the cigar and we'll come back uh, one third. Yeah. Let's uh, get it toasted and cut up. All right, well, we'll get it toasted and cut up, and we'll let you know what we're getting. Ooh. Lots of, uh, lots of earthiness, lots of, uh, leather, uh, the finish lasts quite a while. There's a lot of spice, uh, especially in the retro hail. Um, I can already tell it's going to be a fantastic uh, a stick. Already lots of flavors going on. Uh, look forward to seeing what they develop into. Yeah, right now uh, my draw's a little tight but manageable. Uh, flavors for me is just a raw tobacco, very earthy. Uh, leather would be a good word. Um, a little bit of spice, I'm not really picking up that chocolate that I got in the aroma, but we'll see how it develops. But right now, just a raw tobacco, a deep earth, a little bit of spice uh, on the finish. Steve? Getting that as well. It's uh, a full bodied cigar. I'm getting the, uh, the earthy tones. All right. A bit of that barnyard essence as well, a little bit of leather. Lots of very natural, natural flavors. Nice smooth cigar. Mm -hmm. 
Very smart. Well, let's get into the first third. Welcome back. We're about, about a, ten minutes in, about an inch into this uh, Arturo Fuente and Ajo. So far, a lot of the flavors that we picked up uh, on the pre-light smell, lots of uh, earth, lots of dark, dark chocolate. And we've been talking about the, uh, the finish and especially the retro ale. I get sort of a tart sweetness, and I, I would equate it to a raspberry uh, sort of sweetness on, on the retro ale, but uh, I don't know ex exactly what it is. I'm, I'm going I'm to be keeping track of that, seeing if I can find a better analogy. Yeah, well, for me, it's definitely, like I said, the earthy flavors. It's like a, it encompasses the whole body of the cigar for me. It's this deep earth. Uh, very woodsy, very like an organic soil smell, and it's just a very nice deep earth for me, and dark chocolate as well. Right there, they're fighting like, tooth and nail on who's got who's playing the the first fiddle in this cigar. It's deep earth, dark chocolate. Then as we go into that finish, it's a relatively long finish for me. I can really still taste it into the next uh, draw. Is that tartness that Wyatt mentioned? Yeah, I can't really equate it to a fruit. It's sweet, but it's got like a, there's almost a little bite to it, which is nice. A little tartness that I'm really enjoying. And again, yeah, hopefully that develops more into a, a player. Um, yeah, right now, it's, you know, those are my flavors. The body's medium to full for me. Straight's pretty mild to medium. I'm not getting a real nicotine buzz off this. Uh, draw's still a little tight, but I can manage. Uh, burns real good. It's not razor sharp, but it's no need in touch-ups. The ash is holding together. It's nice, white ash. Uh, very nice. Steve? I agree. Thank you. That is a, a beautiful ash, very well constructed. Um, it's developed pretty nicely in the first maybe three quarters of an inch here. Um, getting a bit of a, a smoky, like leathery kind of taste but it's not overpowering. It does blend in with all the other flavors that Wyatt and Dustin have mentioned uh, pretty nicely. Um, I'm also getting kind of like a, an oaky, like a very rich, um, rich wood flavor to it. Um, but all the, uh, all the flavors do go together very nicely to complement one another. Um, yes, well, get down to about halfway and we'll see you later. All right, welcome back. We're about uh, at the halfway point of this uh, Arturo Fuente Añejo. So far, very complex. Uh, there's a lot of flavors going on in this cigar. Uh, you know, that that real rich earth flavor has really kicked in for me. And even just uh, just standing up to turn on the camera, I got, you know, a little bit of that, that nicotine kick. So. Uh, I would rate this personally probably a, a definitely a medium to full, more on the full side uh, of a cigar. This is a very complex uh, uh, Fuente that changes a lot. The flavors are all very distinct and different, but uh, trying to pick them out is, is, is definitely a, an activity. So this, is, this isn't a cigar for the beginning smoker, but somebody that really wants to treat themselves, really wants to see uh, uh, what a cigar can be. What a really good cigar can be, uh, very, very good so far. I would agree. This thing has kicked up in strength. I would say medium to full, if not full, for strength. Body, medium to full. Um, flavors for me have shifted a little bit. Uh, that, that deep, rich, rich earth is still there. But for me, the, the dark chocolate is kind of taken up as the driver's seat. And uh, that earthy flavor is starting to take a... Uh, uh, right shotgun, so to speak, because it's still there, still easy to pick out and, and right there on, on the draw, but it just, uh, that for me, that chocolate has really picked up. That tartness we spoke of early, for me, it's starting to play a little bit more of a pronounced role. It's not, I wouldn't say it's uh, one of the uh, really robust flavors, but when it comes into that uh, finish, it's really starting to play more of a role, especially in the retro hail. It's a little more pronounced, a little more defined. I'm starting to pick up also a, a nuttiness on the tail end of that finish. Something like a, not a sweet nut, but just like a, like a, a almost, yeah, like an almond. So it's almost got like a, a creamy texture to the nut. It's a creamy nuttiness that's starting to come in on the tail end of the finish. Going right into the next draw. Um, excellent smoke. Uh, burn is 
not perfect, but never needing a touch up. And uh, draw for me has always been a little bit tight, but still manageable. Steve? Well, I agree. The, uh, the flavors have become bolder, and as they have, they've changed a little bit. That earlier tartness has transformed itself for me into more of a, a bittersweet type flavor. Um, like a bittersweet, uh, as it plays with the, the chocolate, like a bittersweet chocolate, or um, like uh, not really a, a baking chocolate, but more like a, a dark chocolate, but uh, with uh, something bittersweet in it. Um, it's consistent, it's always stayed lit. Uh, still a nice, nice ash. That's all for now. We'll uh, be back at the last uh, quarter of the summer. Welcome back. Uh, we're at the last quarter or third or so of this uh, Arturo Puente and Ajo. So far, it definitely packs a punch, uh, especially for me. Uh, I'm getting a real heavy nicotine buzz off of this, but uh, an excellent cigar. Uh, construction overall, I've had a couple of runners that mostly fixed themselves. Uh, out, but uh, flavor, I'm getting a lot of spice, especially as the cigar comes to a close uh, through the retro ale, lots and lots of spice. Uh, I'm getting sort of that almond taste, and, and personally I've always found almonds more drying than, than anything else, but uh, it's very pleasant taste. I'd rate this 9.5 out of 10, uh, probably 9.7, 9.8, uh, really, really, really good. Uh, very complex, has a lot of dimensions. Uh, for an ideal Maduro stick, this should definitely be on your list. Yeah, I agree. Uh, for me, it's definitely ramped up in strength. I call it full strength, full body cigar. Uh, for me, I'm getting that spice, like earthy spice right in the forefront. As soon as you pull that uh, dry in, you're getting an earthy spice. The finish is rather long. I'm still getting that nuttiness, uh, that almond flavor that Wyatt mentioned. But it's still, for me, I'm getting a creamy uh, dimension to that and with the finish, and it's real pleasant. Um, it's been a very good cigar. The flavors have always, you know, through the profile, has changed. I enjoy that in the stick. So, it's, you know, a highly complex cigar. I have not had burn issues. Um, everything that's kind of not razor sharp, and everything's corrected itself. Um, ash has always held on really well. Uh, draw was consistently kind of tight for me all the way through, but like I said, manageable. Um, I'm going to grade with Y 9.8999. I mean, closest thing to a 10 without being a 10. Um, great cigar. One thing I never mentioned that I probably should is it always left a nice oily sheen that had that kept those flavors there on your lips. Uh, I think that's where a lot of the almond came from for it, the English, yeah. the wrapper. And it's really, really pleasant. Um, I think these are around 14 bucks a stick at our uh, local brick and mortar. Um, I think uh, you can get them online some places, but they're going to be relatively expensive. And I think they're, like Steve mentioned, you know, they're very rare. So some places may have them, some places may not. But great stick. I highly recommend it if you can pick one up just to try it. Just to say you had it. Great stick. Steve? Well, a lot of the uh, the chocolate and the leather has kind of taken a back seat, and the spiciness has really taken a, a predominance uh, in flavor in the, uh, the last third of the cigar. Uh, I'm getting some of the creamy flavors, but I'm not able to pick out much of the walnut or uh, almond, almond flavors. That white and custom were able to pick out. Um, these cigars are kind of rare. Um, what people will do throughout the years, you can get them all year long if you're prepared to spend $30 a stick. People will stock up on them uh, this time of year uh, when they can buy them at a retail shop around 13, 14 bucks a stick, uh, depending on, on, the, uh, on the type of cigar and size. Um, and then people will sell them at $30 online, which is kind of uh, different from how online cigars typically work uh, in terms of pricing. Um, the cigar shops themselves, the retail shops, they don't, uh, 
they don't sell them throughout the year. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and they're, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but they're done in, on an allotment basis. So it's not like the cigar shop can call up Arturo Fuente or whoever their distributor is and just order more. Um, because Fuente only distributes so many that's based on their uh, level of volume throughout the year. Uh, this is a very good cigar, uh, one of my personal favorites, uh, which not too many cigars are on that list. But I would rate this at about uh, about a 96 out of 100, or 9.6 uh, out of 10. Very good smoke, if you can find them. Um, and as well, Justin always says. Well, first, before we end it, uh, I want to thank Steve. He's the one that uh, generously donated these cigars for review. Um, great stick. Until next time, smoke them if you got them. <laughs>